No one wants to hear the words, you have cancer, but our next guest says that cancer can be a new beginning, that it does not have to be a nightmare or a death sentence. She's Carolyn Gross, a breast cancer survivor, or as she puts it, a thriver. And she joins us today as part of our book author series to talk about her new book, Treatable and Beatable, Healing Cancer Without Surgery. Welcome to the show. Oh, what a privilege. Thank you so much. What an honor it is to sit here and chat with you. You have, you are a breast cancer survivor, stage three breast cancer survivor. Tell me a little bit about your personal story and when you were diagnosed. In 2003, I was really living my dream. I was touring the country and promoting a book of all things. And it was at that time I found a tumor in my breast. And when I found out that I had stage three breast cancer and went through the traditional process of being diagnosed, they said, well, you know, you have, to, you have no option but a complete mastectomy. And I went, Wow, first of all, the idea that I had no option but a complete mastectomy, and also that I was at stage three, because I've kind of a healthy camper. Yeah. Exercise, eat right, you know, think happy thoughts, you know, and all that. How did that happen to me? Well, anyway, both my grandmothers had been breast cancer survivors, and I was being offered the same treatment that they had received when they were saying, you can have a complete mastectomy. And I thought, you know what? Something doesn't seem right. That 30 years ago, and we haven't progressed anywhere farther than that. So I got busy and, and found a way out of my predicament, if you will, without losing my breast. Well, that, was, that leads me to my next question. You yeah. healed yourself without the invasive treatments, without surgery. How? Well, what happened was, first of all, I just had that feeling like a mastectomy isn't my answer here. And I, of course, went and did research, and I found out about immunotherapy, the idea that your immune system can reverse cancer. You know, that same field of defense, that front line of defense that we have heals the colds or the flus, that why not use that to heal cancer? So that was the avenue that felt comfortable me, with, for me and I went with it. And everything that you learned through your experience, I am sure is what inspired you to write Treatable and Beatable, the, the, the book that we're talking about this morning. How can you help women claim their own power? What are their, what are their alternative options? Well, first of all, I knew I was going outside the box, you know, by not having, as I like to call it fondly, slash poison and burn, but surgery, you know, chemotherapy and radiation. And the thing that I realized is if people and if patients believe in their treatment, they heal. But if they feel like, oh, no, not that, then, of course, they don't because they're almost battling the treatment. Meanwhile, they've got cancer in their body, and that's the thing that needs to be focused on. Is that part of what immunotherapy is? Is there part of it that has to do with your belief in how something is going to work? Does that help? No, you that's that? actually psychoneuroimmunology. That's using the mind to impart to the immune system. We have a job to do here, and it boosts the immune system. Mm -hmm. So positive thought literally helps your immune system kick into high gear. Fear and cancer don't go together. And so one of the problems I had with that original diagnosis of you only have one choice but a complete mastectomy was, you know, you're trying to scare me. Yeah. It sounds scary to me, right. you know. Right. I want to go with, uh, you know, the least invasive treatment because I'm a young woman and I want to have a healthy rockin' life after this thing's over. What are the options that women can consider, that women can think of when they feel that first moment of fear, when they think, okay, I've got to get the right attitude, what's next? The internet is our friend in this way, but you also have to be very careful. But you can research any diagnosis. You can research any treatment protocol. And I think patients and women, as especially, you know, women are the health keepers of the nation, which is why I was so excited to be on your show, because the more we can educate women about their bodies and impart that to their families, very important. First, you have to research. Second, you have to realize this is what I think is going to work for me. And then third, be part of the team. You don't give all the power away to the doctor, it's your body. Maintain the power. Yeah. Claim the power for yeah. yourself. That's One right. thing that I found f fascinating that I had not heard of, cancer vaccines. I, I had heard of the, the vaccine for HPV, right. which prevents, helps prevent some types of cervical cancer. Yeah. Why, are, why isn't this more mainstream that there are cancer vaccines that are out there besides the HPV vaccine? Well, that's partly why I'm on your show. I want that to be there. What's happening is we do have cancer vaccines coming. As a matter of fact, Time Magazine last year showed how we were in the war on cancer and immunotherapy was on the scoreboard. Uh -huh. And there are such better chemotherapies as well and targeted radiation. So it isn't really slash poison and burn anymore. It's gotten much better and less 
that's invasive. However, educating the immune system, you want that patient to have a strong immune system when the battle's over. And you remember in the old treatment days, it wasn't that way. So right now, patients can get the cancer vaccine generally after they've had some of those other treatment protocols. After the options. And my story is you can have it as a front line of defense right at the beginning. What do you think, uh, real quick before we're out of time, what do you think the most important tool is to successful healing? Self-care equation. Patients have to detoxify their body. They have to really regulate what they're eating. They have to have supplementation because the immune system really responds to that. Keeping track, having a journal of what you're doing and how you're doing it is important too because really you're in charge. In terms of people who believe in their healing continue to stay healthy. People who keep looking for cancer find a recurrence. I don't, I don't believe in that. I believe cancer is treatable and beatable. It has been so great to have you here this morning. Thank you so much for joining us, and thank you for the book. Yes, you're welcome. You are an inspiration to a lot of women who are watching. Thank you. We appreciate it. Now, if you would like more information about Carolyn, or if you would like a copy of Treatable and Beatable, just check out the website, treatableandbeatable.com.